You guys wanted real world thermal testing, so that's what I've done. This video will be a little bit longer than our normal videos, but for those who want to know if our Sabron PS5 heatsink performs better than a third party heatsink using Sony's passively cooled method, well, stick around because all will be revealed. Hello everyone, it's Mike from Sabrent here, and if you enjoy tech videos and tech related videos, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you stay updated. If you haven't watched our previous two videos on this heatsink, then I'll leave some links down in the description as those videos will explain why we went for this design and answer some of your questions. This video is going to be a little bit longer than usual, as I mentioned, but it's worth watching all the way through. Now that the SSD upgrade software is in public, we thought, let's do some thermal tests as we've got the final version of the software. The Sabrin PS5 heatsink uses the PS5's natural fan airflow to cool the heatsink over going for Sony's passively cooled method. And we aren't new to heatsinks. Our Sabrin heatsink for PCs is arguably the best heatsink for your SSD, for your PC on the market. So when we took the challenge to make one for the PS5, we had the idea to basically make a modified version of this to fit inside the PS5 SSD enclosure. However, when we ran our tests, we found that while Sony's passive cooling method was sufficient, it wasn't actually the best way to cool your SSD. So our team came up with the idea of replacing the metal cover and turning the entire bay into a large heatsink that not only can thermally conduct more heat and dissipate it, but also utilizing the PS5 fan for lower temperatures. And we actually found that it performed much better in almost every different temperature situation. And obviously that's where we are here today. So let's talk about the testing methodology. The third party heatsink that we've pitted against our Sabrent PS5 heatsink was this. And I won't reveal the brand as we're not here to put any companies down or anything like that, but you can kind of guess who this might be. And some reviewers were also recommending this before obviously our heatsink was revealed. Spoiler, I think that they might change their mind, but there is a disclaimer that these results aren't meant to be a benchmark, but more of a demonstration of how effective our PS5 heatsink is. A lot of you didn't want to wait for other YouTubers tests before ordering. So I decided to get the camera out and record the tests. And once other reviews come out, it will probably only compound our results. Now, because the PS5 doesn't have system tools to check on the thermals, we had to get creative. So I placed the temperature sensor on the controller of our Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus, which is the SSD that I used. The reason I went for the controller is because this is normally the hottest part of the SSD. And I made sure that the sensor was placed almost exactly in the same place when swapping out the heat sinks. Then I wired up another one out, just outside the SSD expansion bay, just to see how it affects temperatures just outside the SSD expansion bay. Now, when I fed the wiring for the third party SSD to the outside of the PS5, I made sure not to block the ventilation holes so that the passive cooling method could perform as it should. So no cheating here. Now, I kept the ambient temperature the same at around 21 degrees with a variation of no more than 0.5 degrees Celsius throughout the test, just to make sure that ambient temperature wasn't affecting the results. I ran four tests. The first test was a transfer test from the SSD to the internal SSD of the PS5. There were some PS5 overhead, which causes the PS5 to heat up and transfers normally take longer. A pretty good test. Second test was a cool down test to see how well both heat sinks dissipate heat. The third test was another transfer test from the internal SSD to the expanded SSD, as this will test the right thermals. And the final but most important test was the game gaming test. For this, I ran Call of Duty with ray tracing on just to push the system. I ran these tests a few times before getting the camera out just to make sure that my application of the sensors could be replicated with accuracy to negate any fitment errors that could skew the results incorrectly. So the first test will be a test of the third party heatsink and then the next one will be our Sabrin PS5 heatsink and then we'll go over the results because honestly this was really interesting. So the first test that we're going to do is we're going to move one game from the uh, storage to the other. So first of all, we're going to move 
uh, Black Ops, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops, because it's a 220-ish gigabyte file, so this should stress the system. So we're gonna move this from the uh, M.2 SSD to the internal SSD. So what I'm gonna do is three, two, one. Oh, let's start that again. So three, two, one. Okay, so that is all transferred as you can see, and the temperature is hovering around 47.6, with the outside temp or the outs inside the PS5 temperature being 34.7. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the PS5 cool for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna set a time for 20 minutes. Then I will move the game from the console storage to the M.2 SSD and see how the temperatures fare after that. So I'm gonna call it for 20 minutes and we'll see obviously how long it takes to cool as well. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes and the SSD temperature is around 21 degrees. It's just hovering around that 21 degrees. And then the outside temperature of the PS5 is 33.1. So now let's move the Call of Duty Black Ops back to the M.2 NVMe SSD and we'll see how the temperatures handle and uh, take it from there. Okay, so the temperature of that was 47.4 and that was moving it from the console to the M.2 SSD. So now let's get into some gameplay and see how the SSD handles after about 40 minutes of gameplay. So I'll check you out after. Okay, so after about 40 minutes of gameplay, the SSD, as you can see, is at around 55 degrees so uh, yeah it could potentially be a lot higher if I played for longer but again to keep the test fair 40 minutes of gameplay that's the temperature we got and as you can see as well on the outside of the PC we've seen an increase in temperature of 37.7 so again we know that the PS5 obviously gets slightly warm when under gameplay and as you can see, I'm playing a bit of Call of Duty because I found that this sort of stresses the system a little bit more. I'm just doing it in campaign mode, but very interesting results. So let's do the same transfer test as before. So we're gonna transfer Call of Duty into the internal PS5 storage. And three, two, one. Okay, so that's the test completed and you've probably seen it was hovering around the 44.5 to 44.6 mark and as you can see as soon as it stopped writing the temperatures are dropping almost instantly as you can see. So now let's run the test the opposite way but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait uh, 10 minutes uh, or, and, or 20 minutes and uh, let, let the SSD cool down. Uh, so keeping it the same as the previous test and then run it again. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes and the SSD temperature is 38.7 with the outside temperature being 32.7 degrees Celsius. And again, that uh, temperature is taken from within the lid. So just to repeat, within the lid. And then now let's go ahead and transfer that same game from the internal storage to the NVMe SSD. So we'll click move and then three, two, one. Okay, so that hit a peak of 44.4 degrees and that was moving a 220 odd gig file from the internal storage to the Sabrin Rocket 4 Plus. So very impressive numbers. 
But now we're going to do a gaming test. So I'm going to game for 40 minutes uh, to really stress out the uh, SSD and we'll see what happens with the results. Okay, so it's been 40 minutes of playing uh, Call of Duty and as you can see the temperature is 38.5 on the SSD and 37.1, 37.0 on the inside of the PS5. So very, very interesting results. So comparing the results of the first test, which took around 16 minutes and 30 seconds long to complete, as you see, our Sabrent PS5 heatsink was around 6% cooler than the third party heatsink. But that's not all. The temperature stabilized for eight minutes, almost half the test at around 44.5 degrees Celsius on the Sabrent heatsink. But on the third party heatsink, it was climbing in temperatures throughout the entire test, meaning it wasn't dissipating the heat fast enough. The second test showed that the Sabrent PS5 heatsink was 6% cooler and I will note that the third party heatsink would sometimes struggle to dissipate its heat when I ran this test before filming. Then our third test shows that the Sabrent PS5 heatsink was again cooler by around 7%. As you may have seen from the timings, this was a much faster test than the first because it looks like there isn't much of, if any, processing being done from the internal SSD to the expanded SSD. But the final and probably the most important test is the gaming test, and this is what really matters. We saw a huge improvement of just under 12% after just 40 minutes of gaming. Now, I was monitoring the temperatures during gameplay on both heatsinks, and I found that the Sabrent PS5 heatsink was consistently lower, and actually by even more of a margin in similar combat heavy scenes. Now, these are the tests that I did film on camera, but I also played a few other games off camera like Destiny 2 and Astro and stuff like that. And the PS5 heatsink was again, consistently lower in temperatures by quite a bit of margin and was rarely even going close to 50 degrees. Whereas the third party heatsink just wasn't in the same league in similar gaming situations. So for those who wanted to know or wasn't convinced that our heatsink was actually cooler or better, well, now you know. And it's not only cooler, but it's far easier to fit this heatsink into the PS5 than having to use six tiny little screws to get this onto an SSD. The Sabrent PS5 heatsink was designed to make fitting a heatsink to the PS5 easy while providing better cooling performance than every other heatsink that we tested in the PS5. Plus, with our pricing, this makes it more affordable to go for an SSD without a heatsink than to buy an SSD with a built-in heatsink or go for a third-party option like, well, this one that doesn't perform well and isn't as easy to fit. Plus, this could be even more important for you guys that live in hotter environments too. I'll leave some links down in the description below to our Sabrent PS5 heatsink, as well as some bundles with our Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus from one terabyte to four terabytes of storage. Just to let you know, we're also bringing out an eight terabyte. So if you've got a whole bunch of games, then this could be an option for you. As mentioned before, I have done a couple of other videos on the Sabrent PS5 heatsink, which I'll also have linked down in the description that should answer pretty much any of your other questions that you might have on this. But that's it for today. If you found this video interesting, then please make sure to hit that like button. And also please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you stay updated for more content like this. Anyway, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.